Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Reapy Rod, and today we're going to be doing another Deep Rock Galactic tier list. This is for the Breach Cutters Overclocks. These are the ones that I have probably the least amount of experience with, at least with about half of them, compared to our other uh, Deep Rock Galactic tier lists. So some of these, I'm not entirely sure where I'd put them, but I have a pretty rough idea, and they may be subject to change in the future when I use them more. Anyway, let's begin starting out with our clean overclocks. We have lightweight cases first. So lightweight cases gives you three more maximum ammo and knocks off 0.2 seconds from your reload time. Faster reloads is always a good thing. More ammo is always a good thing. This one is pretty good. It's not entirely necessary with the breach cutter I found. It is kind of fun to run full ammo with the breach cutter and get, I think it's 21 rounds in total. The base breach cutter is already one of the strongest weapons in the game. So throwing this on it just makes it that much better. Just like with a lot of clean overclocks, I'm probably gonna put this one into B tier. Solid all around choice and I really don't see anything wrong with it. Maybe even A tier because, again, having something like 11 rounds of the Breach Cutter every time you get a resupply is really nice. Our next one is Roll Control. This one is an interesting one and a super fun overclock to use. This one makes it so once you fire the Breach Cutter round and you hold in your mouse button or trigger, whatever it might be, you can then spin the line from the Breach Cutter in 360 degrees, hitting all enemies and creating some interesting attack patterns, I guess, with it. This one I found pretty good if you take the Persistent Plasma. I tried quite a few different uh, builds with the Roll Control the other day, and I found that I liked pretty much all of them. It, they all felt pretty good. I'm honestly not sure how great this really helps. Um, from what I found, it seemed like it was really good on escort missions, and on every other mission, it was a decent option. So I think I'd put roll control into A tier. It just makes the weapon more versatile, and the weapon is already really good. So I guess A tier is a fair place to put this one. I don't know. This one's kind of an odd one, because in terms of what it allows you to do. Sometimes it allows you to do some pretty cool stuff. Other times you're just gonna be using the breach cutter the same way you did all the time, maybe using it every once in a while during a mission. So in that regard, it could easily be C or D tier where it doesn't change the weapon all that much. Our last clean overclock is stronger plasma current. This increases your damage per second by 50 and it also makes it so the projectile has uh, half a second longer of life. This one, again, seems fine. I don't have any problem with it. It makes the breach cutter a little bit better than it already is. Breach cutter is already really good, so making it a little bit better is kind of nice. I would say this is one of the uh, lesser impactful ones, because honestly, I don't find my projectile dying before it gets to the target that I'm trying to hit. I tend not to use the breach cutter at very long range just because the travel time is difficult to hit enemies. So the increase in the lifetime doesn't really help me all that much. And the increase in damage is fine, but I think I'd rather go with one of these other clean overclocks over the stronger plasma current. Not like this would be a bad one, though. So I think I'd put this one into C tier, although I could easily move it up to B tier because it is just a bonus. Now we get to some of the more interesting ones. We have Return to Sender. This makes it so you can fire your line and then recall it back to you so that way it can continue on behind you hitting enemies. This gives you some interesting options and you can hold the Breach Cutter on bigger enemies easier this way, like Praetorians. It can be kind of okay against Dreadnoughts, but I found it to be kind of inconsistent, at least when playing multiplayer. It seems fine on uh, solo, but in multiplayer, sometimes the dreadnoughts just don't stand still long enough, so you hit them and then you try to recall it and then they take it off running, so you didn't really get to use that much from it. This all comes at the cost of six maximum ammo. Cutting down your ammo is kind of bad. I like having a lot of ammo with the breach gun. This can give you more value than that six ammo if you use it correctly, but it can be kind of situational depending on how you want to use it. So I don't think this is one of the strongest ones for the breach cutter, but I don't think it's terrible either. I don't think I've used this one enough to really say that I'm comfortable with it though, because a lot of the time I go to fire it and then recall it and I end up firing another shot from it. So I would put return to sender right now, probably in, uh, probably in B tier. Maybe in C tier. I'm, I'll put it in C tier. Next we have high voltage crossover. This makes it so you have electricity on your lines, which is a good thing. It comes at the cost of 60% of your magazine, which if you have the larger magazine, this is two shots. I think if you have the regular magazine, it's one. So 
you're either holding two shots in the gun or you're holding four shots in the gun depending on which mods you take. That's not a big trade-off for having just electricity on your weapon which will slow down enemies, deal damage over time. This one I honestly just see as a straight upside. It's kind of basic compared to some of the other overclocks but it's pretty good. I would put this one up into A tier. Up next we have Spitting Death. This one is a super fun one. This makes it so you have two and a half times the projectile's lifetime, as well as the width is much wider. This also makes it so when you fire your breech cutter, the lines are spinning. I found this one to be best if you go with the three line one. It just makes it the most consistent to hit enemies. This does lower your damage per second by a lot though. It also halves your maximum ammo and cuts down your magazine size by a lot. So there's a lot of negatives to spinning death. And honestly, it seems very niche to actually be using it in a lot of situations. It can be really good against crowds. It can be really good against something like a Mactera Plague. So it's not a bad one, but it comes at a lot of cons and it's honestly much more difficult to use than something like high voltage crossover or roll control or even like lightweight casings that are just going to give you a bonus to the gun and you can just use it the same way you did before or use it slightly modified. This makes it so you have to modify your playstyle quite a bit. So that can be difficult. That being said, I think I actually have the most experience with Spinning Death and I still find it a little bit awkward to use. So I would probably put this one into B tier because if it's used correctly, it can be really strong, but there's just so many times where you don't necessarily need to use it that way. And then our last one is Inferno. Inferno is also kind of a basic one for the Breach Cutter. This adds fire to your gun at the cost of cutting down on damage per second and armor breaking. Honestly, I figured I would hate this one because the Breach Cutter is so good at doing damage and so good at breaking armor that I figured taking that away just to get some fire damage wouldn't be worth it. I wouldn't say so anymore because even though you're losing out on DPS, you're pretty much guaranteed to ignite something and probably out damage it with the fire. Knocking off a little bit of Breach Cutter's armor breaking still makes it so it breaks through armor quite well. So I don't really notice the armor breaking all that much. And the cut down in damage per second is pretty much completely negated by the fire itself. I think this one's a pretty strong overclock for the breach cutter. I would probably put this one also up into A tier uh, next to the high voltage currents. This is where I'd probably put all of the overclocks for the breach cutter. Like I said, I'm the least familiar with the breach cutter though. Out of all the weapons in Deep Rod Galactic, I just didn't get the overclocks. I think I got them as my last ones. I think my last like four overclocks were just for the breach cutter, so... I have the least amount of time using them, but all of them seem perfectly fine. A special thanks to all of the supporters of this channel. This list will be updated by the end of the month, so if you don't see your name here, don't worry, it will be added soon. As well as if you would like to be on this list, you can do it by joining either the YouTube membership program or going over to my Patreon and pledging any amount there. It will net you a spot on this list. Thank you guys so very much, and if you'd like to see more of these Deep Rock Galactic videos, check this list out right over here, which is all of my tier lists on Deep Rock Galactic. Hope you guys have a great day, and I'll talk to you later. Bye!